It's Beer O'Clock and it's episode 94 of the Beer O'Clock Show, the final episode of the year and of season 5. And we're broadcasting live to all the boys and girls in the Beer O'Clock Show family. My name's Mark and joining me, all dressed up and with streamers at the ready, is the party boy and my bestest beer buddy, Steve. Hello, Steve. Hi, Mark. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much, mate. We have a mysterious... Oh, how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much. I'm, <laughs> it's very rude I'm of fine. me to ask. <laughs> good, good, good. Very rude. You, you got, got so carried away with the fact that we're broadcasting live to nobody. I know. But... I'm so excited. <laughs> We've got three people watching. It's amazing. <laughs> Look out, Excellent. BBC. We'll be on Channel 5 Plus 1 before you know it. We have a mystery... <laughs> We have a mysterious show tonight because we have a beer that I have had hidden from me, tucked away in this cylinder of concealment. Oh, with a strict post it note on it that says, Do not open before 15th and 12th 14, hashtag mystery beer. Because Steve hashtags fucking everything, not just Twitter posts. It's hashtag on everything. I've noticed. <laughs> um... Yeah, so I'm not allowed to open it, or wasn't allowed to open it before tonight on Steve's order, so I have no idea what we're drinking. I didn't even know what kind of glass to bring. I was going to bring a lager glass just to piss you off, Steve. But Please instead, don't tell me you bought a lager I glass. I thought, I didn't. I thought to, to kind of tie off this season, I bought my Teku glass. Good man. I was I was hoping so. you were going to pull out the Teku <laughs> for, for this. So, um... Before we get on to the meat of the show, not that this isn't the meaty bit, shall we get this open? Shall we do the grand Yeah, come reveal? on, mate. Come on, let's, right. let's open the beer. Do you want a, do you want a drum roll? Before I decide to do one of my famous drum rolls? I might need to get... Where's me can opener? Get the little want... get the little knifey bit just to cut through the tape. <laughs> I did put a lot of tape on it. I did, did over tape did. it a little bit because I didn't, I didn't want you to get into it too soon. Well, I did promise. I promised Stephen... That I wouldn't get into it. You did. That's 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 true. Um, for those of you who are doing the Friday night listen, apologies for how. Oh shit! There's little popcorn things in it as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah as it's well, probably, mate. probably packaged as well, mate. Look, these little things. Okay, Mark. Mark is currently unwrapping his beer for those that aren't currently... watching live this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and to all three people who are watching live, hello. Let's yes. get into it. Whoever you are that's watching, can you just tweet us and let us know so we can give you a shout, please? <laughs> yes, tweet the Beer O'Clock Show and Roku Beer, because I don't get no tweets. <laughs> right, oh, it's some bubble wrap as well. Okay, so we're into the bubble Ooh. wrap. We're almost at the fast today. And it's, it's wrapped in Christmas paper through the bubble wrap, so I can't even tell what it is yet. Is it? Did I did I wrap it in Christmas paper as well? Yeah. Oh, that was thoughtful of me. This is this is like an alcoholic <laughs> pass the parcel, then, in that case. Kinda. Except I can't pass it. All we need now is just some cheesy music in, in the background. It's a big bottle. It is a big bottle. A big bottle. It's a big bottle of boozy beer. I'll make sure I'm recording all of this, otherwise we'll be <laughs> fucked. Yes, we are. Very good. Excellent. <laughs> that would not have gone down very well. This is the magic of live recording, ladies and gentlemen. Right, I'm going to be hey. very brutish and actually just tear the paper, buddy. And mate, you'll soon find out it's all about the magic tonight. Oh, fucking hell! <laughs> Tell the boys and girls what you've got. <laughs> Your promise to kill me is going to be actual promise. <laughs> I can barely read it because it's all... Oh, Jesus Christ. It is Magic Rock Bearded Lady, which is a... <sighs> Mate, it's Bourbon not just the Bearded Lady. It's, it's, it's the Bourbon Barrel Bearded Lady Imperial Brown Stout 2014 edition. <laughs> A B A B V of ten point five percent. Oh, that's all, that's all right. That's that's a baby beer. Yeah, yeah. down on one. Six hundred and sixty mils. It's got a little wax top on it as well. Yes, yes. Very a nice. Little wax top. 
for those of you who are listening at home and not watching, then you can see on the camera that you can't actually see what the label says because it's all black. Yeah, but you'll, you'll be able to see pictures of it up on our Instagram feed because it'll, it'll be up there later on tonight. So for those of you that don't know what the Magic Rock Bald and Barrel Beardy Lady Bottles look like, um, it'll be up there later. But, but yes, yeah, so this is our special end of season mystery beer. Hashtag the mystery beer, no longer a mystery. <laughs> Um, I'm just oh, going to say me. hi, mate. I'm just going to say hi to one of the three people that's actually listening in that's tweeted us as, as well. So, um, <laughs> Sam Wellborn um, at Sam Wellborn, welcome to the show, mate. Uh, nice Hello, to have Sam. you along for this evening's li- live broadcast. Um, I do number hope one fan. You... Uh, yeah, tonight's number one fan, <laughs> and I do hope you tune into the podcast when it's released on Friday as, as well, yes. because we wouldn't want to lose listeners just because we've done this live tonight. <laughs> Five people watching now, Steve, and a Excellent. thumbs up. How's there? We go. Brilliant. Here we go. Right. Are we going to are we going to crack this open now? Let's let's get into it. Yeah, let's because uh, I, I, right. I imagine it's probably going to take us a few minutes to get through the wax seal um, based on previous experiences. Yeah. With wax seals, we've had but, some interesting um, yes, been sealed very bottles much. this season, haven't we? Sorry, mate, I missed that. I'm too busy trying to break this wax seal. I said, we've had some interestingly sealed bottles this season. We we have, yes. We, we've had kind of a full range of... Um, this is our second wax one of the year. We've had at least one in foil that I can remember as well. Yep. We've had the uh, the interesting caps that come on the top of the um, some of the bigger Balladin bottles as well. Mm-hmm. And there we go. Once the wax is off... The little magic man is revealed. There he is for the for the watchers at home. There's the magic Look man. Look at his little face. Uh, he, he looks like me, He's doesn't he? little it? smiley that's, face. That's, it, it's Steve when he finds magic rock in a bar. Indeed. I'm sure they modelled it after you. Yeah. All right, I've got through the first layer of wax, but I don't think I've <clears> myself <throat> enough to, to get underneath it. Oh, me neither. This is gripping viewing, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't it just? It, it, it'll make you, for even better listening, I'm sure. You'll be wanting to embed this video on your blogs, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Let's get a little bit more of this wax off. There we go. Right, I've, I'm, I think I've got enough wax off to actually allow me to get into it. Um, so, oh, oh, Sam's just replied to us again. Um, <laughs> said th- thanks for the shout. Um, Long time listener. Sam is to, to the show, so it's nice to have someone that's that's been oh. with us for a while, listening in Hello, tonight. Um, and, and yes, Sam, you do need f- to find a way of cracking the prize this prize. So we look forward <laughs> to your entries next next season. Oh, that and, smells immense! And at Kolu Leeds has just tweeted me with chug chug chug. I will do my best, just uh, mate, Gareth. Don't if you're still watching. Seriously, mate. don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so are we going to crack we, it open now or do we want to do a little bit about what we've got up to in recent days let's um i would say that the bottle's open so so maybe let's just um let it breathe a little bit let, let's talk oh. about um have you opened yours the weekend oh yeah did, oh. did you not just hear me go oh my god that smells immense it smells absolutely mm. amazing i don't think i want i don't think i want to wait oh. it just smells of booze it smells so imperial Stephen. well it is yep. kind of so, imperial mate i know that's my point don't yes. embarrass me in front of all my friends okay right <laughs> <laughs> let's get on to what we got uh, up to I, I just just some somebody's moaning um Day, david martin who was out with us on uh, at the weekend is 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 upset that we're ignoring him and, and that we're only talking about Sam. So, hi, David. How are you doing, mate? Um, this this probably isn't going to work in an audio podcast, is it? But hey, hey ho, it's 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 an experiment for us tonight. Well, David, you should be tweeting me as well, mate, instead of just your your friend, your bestest mate, Steve. <laughs> but anyway, Saturday night, we met up with David amongst other people. We did. We met up with a whole group of people, mate. We had. The Quimbo Crawl was on Saturday. Um, I think I can sum it up with it was a great night with an absolute shitload of people. <laughs> that's my, and, that's and, my and one a, line review. 
and and a shit ton of beer as well. And was, absolute, was a megaton shit. I think a shit ton of beer. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't even it, make it, it brew dog. No, you didn't. But you made it further than you, you you did in the past, mate. So, congrats, congrats for that. Um, it was it was a good day. Um, I'd I'd like to thank ev- everyone that came along. Actually, it was it was nice to see so many people join us at the very beginning, and the, the majority of those people actually stayed with us all the way through to the end at, at Brewdog in Shepherd's Bush as well. Um, what what were the highlights for you, mate, on on the the, the Crimbo Crawl? Oh, um, apart from meeting all the lovely people, of course. Um, I think it was the brew house and kitchen because I, I had a little bit of food and a little bit of beer. Having a chat with the brewer as well, and that's when we got even more people in. And there was a great place just to sit around and mingle. You know, walk around the tables and you can mingle properly, um, rather than before where we were just at a table and stuff. So I think that for me was the highlight. Yeah. Yeah. I th- to be honest with you, I think I'd agree because I, I think I was having some issues in the first bar that we went in with my with my tastes and I just wasn't enjoying any of the beers that I was trying in, in there and I think it was when we got to the brew house and kitchen that um, sampling their brewed on the premises cask beers I, I was just at, loving absolutely every one of them and I, I could have just stayed in there drinking those beers for a lot longer than we did actually but I think you're right in saying the that the atmosphere in there and, and the fact that we were able to move around and I certainly started speaking to a lot more people when we got into brew house and kitchen as well um and i think that's where it really started for for, for me it, it was like the first place was just like a warm-up pub and 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 then then we went to brew house and kitchen onto the Houston tap and then finishing at um brew dog shepherd's bush as well where uh, the guys at brew dog had sorted us out lovely over there as well there was some of the new joe and seth's uh popcorn um waiting for us there was the goat's cheese and black pepper popcorn that was designed to be paired with dead pony club so there were there, there was popcorn and dead pony clubs waiting for everyone, and that that was a really nice touch. So thanks to the guys at Brewdog for sorting that out for us as well. Oh no, I wish I'd gone. Never mind. Mate, the popcorn was just amazing. <laughs> it just, I it, oh, it was just so creamy and tasty, and it was and it worked perfectly with dead pony club as well. Absolutely spot on. Well, if you consider that last year on our Crimbo crawl. We had maybe eight or nine people all up, I think. Yeah, yeah. And on Saturday we had twenty. I, I think throughout the day we we possibly hit twenty at one point. There were definitely fourteen that started with us, and I think there were about fourteen that finished with us. And I think we we, we did hit the the dizzy heights of twenty at one point. Yeah. Yeah, I think when we were at the brew house, which is obviously very easy to get to, I think we had a good crowd of getting up to twenty people. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. It was great. I, I met some people that I've never met before. I had a decent chat with um, one of the guys from Weird Beard about Iron Maiden, which was a joy for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, he was talking about how his idea with the whole concept of the Weird Beard branding was inspired by how Maiden um, constantly reuse Eddie, their mascot, oh, yeah, yeah. and change him on every album. And he wanted that kind of feeling the carry through on their branding so that was really you know, cool now, now you've said that you can really see that in their branding can't you yeah uh, how you they've done that mm-hmm. yeah oh i um, bet he was absolutely loving that mate i bet he was all over that chat <laughs> yeah we're in the we're in the line for the dunny but you know <laughs> you do what you can do uh, he was a captured audience at that point because he was right behind me so while we're waiting for the pisser i talked him off a bit it was really good fun um, oh, and David's accusing Clayfish of hoovering up all the popcorn. Shame on you, David. Clayfish is a hungry boy. Yeah, so. that that was that. I don't think David can accuse anyone of that because I think David and Clay <laughs> hoovered up all of the chicken at the Euston Tap before we got to Brewdog. I had my so fair let's, share. Let's not, <laughs> I had let's my not fair be share pointing any chicken. fingers there, David. <laughs> a big thank you to Heisenberger One for bringing that chicken along that he smoked on the afternoon on his barbecue or in the morning. That was, oh, that was good chicken. That was good. Chicken. It was. It was good chicken. It was very good chicken. 
very good chicken. Yeah. Um, one, one, one of our long-term listeners and, and, and guys that get involved on, on Instagram, Sean Smith, has just said, open the bottle. Um, Sean, we, we have opened the bottle, mate. It, um, it's open, mate. It, it was opened about five minutes ago. We're, we're, we're getting round to pouring it. Give us, give us a chance. We're, we're connoisseurs. Talking. We're connoisseurs of beer, yeah. so we're just letting it breathe. You, you have to remember, the polished product that you normally hear on a Friday normally has a lot of this chaff taken out of it so yeah. we, we record this on a monday because it takes me that long to, to, to edit it down right steve Mark, shall, we, shall we have a bit of a pour buddy let's please because i i have been looking forward to getting into this for months <laughs> okie dokie here we I, go boys and girls i've i've even dropped this out of um even drop this out of my 12 beers of Christmas this year so that we could enjoy it live on the show. Here we go with Magic Rock Bearded Lady. Live on the... Oh, it's brown, isn't it? Well, yeah, I think a slight clue in the title, mate, that it's an imperial brown <laughs> stout. All right, smart ass. I'm just giving people who are oh. listening audio only a visual. Right. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that, I suppose. What 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 are you thinking about the smell of that? That smells like strong beer. It smells really nice. It's it's got a really big boozy whiskey hit to it, hasn't it? It does, um, yeah. Which which just comes off the top of it. Um, there's a little bit of sort of like some sweet flavours in there, maybe some vanilla and some maybe a little bit of toffee in there as well, and there's a Oh, I just got a big hit of bitter, dark bitter chocolate as well, coming off of that. Yeah, you can get you get the booze, you get like a slightly wet wood, really dark caramel type yep. aromas off yep. it, and no doubt it's, we'll it's get all even more of there, that as it, it warms up because it mine came out of the fridge like ten minutes ago, so it's still warming up. Uh, so now mine's mine's been at room temperature all day, so I'm, uh, I'm hoping it's pretty pretty much at perfect drinking temperature for this see, evening. I didn't know what type of beer it was, so you had you had the benefit of that. Yeah, I didn't really want to give too much away. Cheers, guys, and to everybody that's watching and listening uh, at home. Cheers, cheers to you all for sticking with us through season yeah. five. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Here we go. Oh. Whoa, that's warm. Ooh. That's really warming. Oh, it's dark and it's sweet and it's bitter and then there's oh. this hot it's burns. hot finish to it. That's um It bangs! Oh. It bangs me. I, I have to say, straight off the bat, because I, I had the uh the twenty thirteen edition of this as well when it was released last year um, and from if memory serves me correctly I found that a lot smoother th than this it was that that's that's a little bit harder to drink um, I believe this has been aged in different whiskey barrels from the 2013 version as well um, but we'll see we'll see how it develops in the glass over the time that we're drinking it yeah I um, you can get the booziness straight away lovely and smooth though just kind of oozes over your tongue you get that lovely darkness those dark flavors the kind of slightly coffee-ish slightly bitter flavors and then the burn that whiskey burn on the end that, that burn just comes through n nicely that does doesn't it yeah it, it really does we've got um kulu leads has, has, has been on again um gareth uh He's managed right. to resist drinking his 2013 bottle until now, and and that's on his list for his 12 beers of Christmas this year. Um, well, well, Gareth, mate, I can I can tell you that's a stunning beer, and you've done well to age that for nearly 18 months. So I'll I'll, I'll be keen to hear <laughs> what that tastes like when you when you crack that one. And our commiseration to your family when you on your passing, when you finally do. Yes. <laughs> And, 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 and Dave, Dave's been in touch again. He's just found a bottle of 
ball and barrel bearded lady hiding in his cupboard and he's asking us if he should. There's only one answer to that question, Davis. David? Yes. Yes, you should. Crack it Down and join one. us for, for this evening's show. Down yes. and one, lad. So, oh, we've got comments. Comments are flying in now, mate. I think we need to do some some, some show stuff and then we'll come back to the comments, I think, because otherwise it's just going to end up being, being us reading out a constant stream of comments, isn't it, tonight? <laughs> Which won't be of any interest to anyone except for us. Yeah, cheers to everybody's comments. We'll do our best to get to them as, as, as we go through the show. It's going to be a fairly long show. We've, we've got a lot of this beer to get through. Um, right, let me just pull up the list of beers that we've had from this season. Okay, well, while you're doing that, I'll, I'll read yep. out some of the comments then as, as a perfect right. filler. Uh, the Wolf <laughs> of Outrage, otherwise known as Crema Brewery, um, is, has just dropped us a, a message. Um, I think this is just rubbing it in more than anything, Chris. He's drinking Human Cannibal at the Euston Tap, which clearly wasn't on on Saturday night when we were there. Um, but he did say <laughs> here's to another, another year of the Beer O'Clock Show. So, so thanks for that, Chris. Appreciate your your comments. Um, and then the show's long-term number two fan, um, possibly vying for the number one fan spot at the moment as well. Miles Lambert um, says that we're looking sharp and uh, what's everyone hoping for from Santa? Uh, I think we'll get on to the what do we want from Father Christmas a little bit later. Thank you, Miles. But nice to know that you're with us tonight. Um, <laughs> number one fan for that, Miles. Good on you, buddy. Uh, you know what? Show. I think now's the time to announce a new number one fan live on air. I think it's got to be Miles. I think this year he's oh, well and truly taken Doody's mantle. And, you know what? Doody yeah, won't even Miles be upset because he doesn't even watch anymore. He doesn't even listen. I oh, know. Doesn't even watch. Doesn't listen. He doesn't write. He doesn't call. He's never there for us. No. Um, so um, yeah. Miles, Miles Lambert, well done, mate. You're our new number one fan. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to what beers we've had this season. So I've got the season five okay, beer list in front of me. They were, from beginning to end, Beer del Borgo, My Antonia, Rodenbuck Grand Cru, Beer del Borgo Riale, Thornbridge Halcyon, which I don't even know why we drank that, Baladin Isaac. Don't. <laughs> Five points IPA Baladin Nationale Nationale Brass Castle Bad Kitty Bira del Borgo Reporter um, Do we have the bear hug? I can't remember. We did have the bear hug, yeah We did. Yeah, we yeah, had you got the bear TBC, hug You've got TBC on the beer list, man You've got to keep it updated Baladin <laughs> Mora <laughs> We try, try the Graham... show notes that I sent through to you that had the up-to-date <laughs> list on it. <laughs> Graham Nelson, Vienna IPA. We had our homebrew special last week. And finishing off tonight, we've got Bearded Lady from Madrid Grok. So out of all those, mate, apart from Halcyon, because that's, you know, <sighs> that, that's written on the wall already, what was the one that you liked the most, you reckon? Oh, you know what? I knew you was going to do that. I knew that question was coming. Um, it's a really tough question because I've I, I looked at the list earlier, and and there are probably four on there that that were standout beers for me. So I, I'd I'd like to talk about the four, and then then I'll tell you which of the the four has has really knocked my socks off this season. So um, start off with the um, the Thornbridge Graham Nelson Vienna IPA, which which was an absolute absolute stunner of, of a beer it was it was like gold dust to get hold of from the supermarket but once you actually managed to get hold of some um, that was just a cracking beer everything I look for in an IPA really so that really did enjoy doing that one and also enjoyed talking to Graham on that show and and also Rob Lovett from the Thornbridge Brewery it was nice to have them both on with us um, then probably coming in um, I'll, I'll do these two together uh, because they're part of the theme. Um, two of the beers from Bira del Borgo. Um, so it will come as no surprise to anybody listening or watching this week that I'm going to say my Antonia um, because that was my first introduction to Italian craft beer and it was an absolute stunner. It just knocked my socks off. It, first, time, first time having an Imperial Pilsner, um, it just had this fantastic... Italian flavour to it, um, and then you, you know you had this sharp, strong, hoppy finish of the the dogfish head presence in there, and and then the other one was the the Bira del Borgo Reale, 
which for me was just a real example of of what these guys in Italy are doing with beer at the moment, and and then to have taken that one step further as well during the year and been lucky enough to have tried the ninth anniversary edition of that at Indie Man and also to have tried the Riale Extra as well. That that was a real eye opener for me. Um, and the last one, and I think I've probably left this to last because I think I'm actually going to say that this is my beer of the season. And and this is a real surprise because had, had you said to me at the beginning of the the season that I would have chose this at my, as as my favourite beer, I, I think I would have said nah, it'll be one of the it'll be one of the others. But the Brass Castle Bad Kitty was absolutely stunning. And listening back to that show recently, the the way that we were talking about it, we fell in love with that beer. Um, and it just it just had these flavours and aromas to it that even now I can still remember them reminding me of Christmas, of childhood memories of Christmas, and that that was just a real winner for me. And it was it was great having Rob Derbyshire from Hop Zine on that show with us as well, and 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 reviewing that beer with us. So they've probably been my four standouts, and with, with Brass Castle coming out on top, actually. What what about yourself, mate? Um, well, I I think I can honestly say that with the exception of perhaps the reporter which was the tobacco beer <laughs> wasn't it yeah um that and i think well i think that only that one um and <laughs> carl's homebrew that exploded all on my all over my desk <laughs> apart from those two beers yeah i think we which was we, interesting last week <laughs> yeah i think we had a great season as far as beers went um i mean road and background crew was Amazing, the real was amazing. Um, Nazionale, I really liked. Um, all the Italian beers, apart from the Reporter, were like top shelf. As our as our first number one fan would have would have said, or top draw, or whatever. You to say. Top 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 um, draw, top yeah. draw, mate. Absolutely top um, draw. Everything was just great. I I think my number one would probably be. Either my Antonia or Grand Crew, they really kicked off the season really well. Okay, cool. Both. I don't. To be honest, I, yeah, I, I don't think there's been a, a bad beer at, at, among the ones we've done this season. The only, the only one that I, I remember not standing out was probably the Bear Hug Hibernation White IPA, which I think I distinctly remember saying it was a beer that made me thirsty and, yeah, and made me want to drink more beer. Um, yeah. Which maybe that was the intention of it. Who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's been a it's been a solid season, mate. Actually, I think we've had a really good uh, a really good selection of beers this year. Yeah, and a big pat on our own back. Why not? Yes. Um... Yeah, if anybody <laughs> anybody wants to pat us on our back right now, that's watching. Hashtag pat on the back. <laughs> and I think that beers from Italy, fifteen percent discount is still live for a little while. I was just going to say it's, it's going to be live until the 31st of December. So yes. you, you've got so, a few more weeks. So if you want to get your hands on those Italian beers with 15% off, um, jump to it. You know, Don't be put off by their postage because the 15% kind of you know, helps with that, really. It eases, um, it. it eases it a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. And the beers, you'll get a box of beers that you, you won't be able to just walk into a supermarket and get all your average beer specialty shop even and get they're really nice beers so just try it get 15 15% off as well so go to our season 5 beer list on the website and check that out it's definitely worth it yeah and, and I think it's probably worth again at, at this point just saying um, thank you to, to, to Andy and Jeremiah from Beers from Italy for um, sorting us out with those discounts this season sorting us out with the beers as well that, that we drank and and sorting both Mark and I out with a lovely Teku glass for, to to enjoy them from as as well. So so thank you, um, Andy, for for sorting that out for us. It's been a pleasure working with you, um, and we do hope that more people now take the opportunity to try some some Italian craft beers. Yeah, we're a bit spoiled by those guys. <laughs> it's very nice. Yes, very spoiled. This beer is warming up really well. So am I actually. The, the more of it I drink, the warmer I'm beginning to feel. I'm, I'm beginning to feel all rosy, um, <laughs> like, I, I'm, like I'm sat in front of a log fire on Christmas Day. It's just lots of lovely dark, syrupy, bitter, or boozy flavours coming through. 
yeah it's um there's a, there's a little bit of roasted coffee going on in there now there's there's still that you get a lovely wash of, of of bitter dark chocolate coming through on it on every sip and and, and th- that booziness just smacks you in the face time and time again and just the very 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 slightest hint of vanilla just smoothing things out i think might just be my imagination yeah. but that's what i reckon it's, it's balancing the whiskey notes, uh, I think, the, the vanilla is. Yeah, the boozing is, isn't actually as overpowering as some beers like this that we've had before. Like, if you think of looking back to one of those Innocent Gun Christmas beers we had way back in, like, season one or something, and the booziness yeah, yeah, of that was really overpowering. Yeah. Um, but this is just... I don't know, it's lovely and smooth. And it doesn't have that usual magic rock taste, which is quite surprising. It's very well balanced. Um, yeah, you, you generally don't tend to. Um, you, you generally don't tend to get the, the the big hoppy magic rock hit from their darker beers. It, it's a lot more subtle in in there. Um, but this is a. I mean, the bourbon barrel bearded lady starts off as dark arts. Um, dark arts rep- recipe. Um, and then it becomes, they have a, a, a smaller version called Bearded Lady as well, which comes in at 9%. Um, and then obviously they have the, the Bourbon Barreled version as well. And this is a this is an annual release, so it's only the second time that Magic Rock have released this. And you'll notice on the bottle that it says number five. So um, that's the, the, the fifth of their special releases that they do in these um, wonderfully embossed bottles. Um so the, the 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 four that have gone between this, obviously the two human cannonballs, um, strong man, and and last year's bearded lady. Um, so they're well worth keeping your eye out for when they come up because they they do come up only once a year. I'm just pouring some more out. These are really beautiful bottles. I love the way they do their etching on. It's not really etching. It's the painted on labels, but it's just it's, it's another brewery that really gets branding. You can tell magic oh, rock yeah, when you see the bottles, can't you? Yeah, and it's it's probably no massive secret anymore either that magic rock are going to be getting a can in line when when they move as well, and and, and the excitement over seeing the magic rock branding on a can, um, it's just I'm almost in bits about it. I I swear that there will be a constant supply of canned cannibal in my fridge when when that <laughs> great day comes. What you should do is just get yourself like a Coke vending machine and just fill it with cannonball. And so, so it's you what I have from... to make myself pay for it every time that, that I order one. <laughs> no, no, you, 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 get, you get, set it up so you don't have to pay for it, but you knock off work, you cross your office, hit, hit, hit the button for cannonball, cannonball slides down, crack it open, there you go. Nice and refrigerated, yeah. sorted. Winning, <laughs> winning every time with that, yeah. <laughs> oh dearie me! Right, what else went on in this season? We had right. quite a few guests this season, mate. We we have probably more guests than ever before. Actually, we 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 certainly um, upped our guestage on on the show. I'm guessing you'd like me to talk about the the, the guests actually <laughs> at that point as well. Okay. Um, well, I mean, we, we've, we've already already mentioned them a couple of times, but Andy and Jeremiah from Beers of Italy obviously joined us for, for the beginning and the end of the Italian beer, so it was nice to, to have those guys actually talking to us about some of the history involved with Italian brewing um, and also where they want to go with their um, what they're doing with, with the beers that they're importing. Um, we had Charles List blogger Matt Curtis joining us back at the beginning of the season for the, the Roden Back Grand Crew. Um, which was nice to have Matt on and his wealth of experience and knowledge that he shared with us. Um, Rowan Molyneux for our pre-Indie Man Thornbridge house on Loving. Um, and Rowan obviously also, as did Matt, also joined us on the Indie Man special as well, giving us some in, some guest reviews from the, the, the conference itself. Uh, Rob Derbyshire, as we already mentioned, from Hopsine, Graham and Rob Love, Love It on, on the Thornbridge VNL IPA show. Um, Mr. Pallet himself, some random bloke off Twitter, Justin Mason, uh, joined us once again for the uh, Keto Reporter. Uh, the greatest beard we've ever had on the show, 
Um, sorry, Carl, we're not talking about you, mate, but Peter McCary and his massive ginger beard were, were on the show with us uh, when we reviewed the Five Points IPA. And then all the, uh, the, all the homebrewers last week, um, AD, Carl and Dave, all, all coming on, giving up their time, giving up a lot of their beers as well um, to chat through. So, yeah, it's been a, it's been a really great season for um, guests on the show. And, and we're, we're just going to – we're going to kind of continue with that theme in the future, I think. We will still do – quite a few episodes where it's just Mark and I because we, we do just like to retain our, our solo status sometimes but I just think sometimes it's nice having people on with us that, that, that bring a different element to the beers. What, what do you think, mate? Yeah, absolutely. And it's a great way for me because I don't network as much as you do, obviously. But it's a great way for me to meet people that are in the community and then go on, you know, we've had all these people on this week but, I mean, on this season but I've meet, met the beard himself in person which was really nice i've met matt in person matt curtis which was really nice um and justin is an old friend of the show as well so it's just great getting these people in and the newbies and stuff and it's just great i mean i love the shows that you and i do together but getting that little element in and having things like the homebrew special and the lock-ins and stuff like that we have built a little beer clock show family over the last five seasons. It's been great. We we have indeed, mate. And and talking about the lock in, um, we have the the next one's coming up on Saturday, the seventeenth uh, of January, um, which has been um, kindly supported by Left Hand Brewing from Colorado, who have have given all of our uh, guests on that show. Two bottles of beer. We are doing their milk stout and their nitro milk stout in kind of a direct, direct side by side comparison. And coming up right now is um, an interview with Sharona, who is Left Hand Brewing's UK representative, who is going to tell us all about the um, milk stout and the nitro milk stout. We've got Sharona with us from Left Hand Brewing to tell us a little bit about the beers. Welcome, Sharona. Thank you, Steve. Okay, so we're doing Milk Stout and Nitro Milk Stout. They're um, basically the same beer? Yeah, they're the same beer. It's just one has nitrogen and one doesn't. Okay, so what does the nitrogen add to the nitro version of the beer? Well, what makes it interesting is the nitrogen version has a much creamier mouthfeel, and because it you know, takes out a lot of the aroma, you get a lot more of the malt forward, the chocolate characteristics, Whereas with the non-nitro version of the Milk Stout, you're going to get more of the coffee out of it. You're going to get a lot more of the aroma. It's just a totally different flavor profile. And it's all based on the gas, which is, which is really interesting that it can have such an effect. Okay, and, and, and the gas allows us to do something which we'll be trying on the lock-in called the hard pour. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Oh, the hard pour is the secret to pouring the nitro out of the bottle. You're basically pouring it at 180 degrees, straight up and down into a pint glass, with no fear of overflow. It's not going to, you know, go over the top, but it creates that gorgeous cascade where it goes starts from the bottom of the glass and then just condenses up to the top. And it's just a beautiful way to pour it. And when you do it when the beer is cold and just flip the bottle straight up and down, it creates the most beautiful pint of beer. And you'll be able to witness us doing this live. Um, let's just go back and just, just talk about the beers again. So what, what are the sorts of ingredients that have gone into making the, uh, the original version of the Milk Stout? So they both have the same ingredients. Um, they have Pale Two Row, Crystal, Munich, Roast Barley. Um, they have flaked oats, flaked barley, and also chocolate and lactose as well. Okay, and obviously the, the nitro has got the added nitrogen yes, in, in the there nitrogen as well. The, the version that gives that. Um, tell us a little bit about Left Hand Brewing as, as well. Why we've got you here today? Oh well, it's been around for like twenty one years. It's in the top fifty U.S. craft breweries. It was started by Dick and Eric in nineteen ninety three. Um, actually, their very first beer was the Sawtooth Ale, and they premiered it at GABF in their first year of existence and they won a gold medal and they thought let's just go with it and then their blackjack porter which they had only submitted on a whim they were actually planning on changing the recipe it won a medal as well that year and they're like I guess we'll keep it as it is and those were the two flagships that launched a thousand ships so and when did they add the the, the milk stout to the range uh, the milk stout's been around um, you know for quite a while and the nitro came out in 2011 so it was launched at GABF that's where they premiered it so. Okay, so 
your your supplying the beers for us for, for the locking. Thank you very much. We're we're very appreciative of that. As will the uh, assembled cast uh, who are supporting <laughs> us on the locking bee. Um, and make sure you catch the lock-in. As I say, it's going to be on Saturday, the 17th of January from 9pm. Um, it will be on YouTube, but we will be sharing a link with you um, a little bit closer to the date on that. Sharona, thank you for your time today. It's been great having you on the show. It's been great, thanks. Thank you very much. Cool. All right, mate. How are you getting on with this beer? Mate, I'm absolutely loving it, but I think it's burning me up inside. I am... <laughs> red hot now all flushed i'm feeling oh. rosy and, and I've, oh. I've still got still got this oh, hang on a minute let, let's move that brand in um i've, I've still got this massive <laughs> bulbous glass full to, to get through. <laughs> i didn't want to put it in in my stout glass because i thought i just thought the stout glass was wrong for it and i thought that uh, i was going to go with the teku but then i've, I've got kind of this I think they call them a snifter glass um, that, that's just perfect for this sort of beer. So, so yeah, I'm I'm still loving it, mate. How, it's, it's, how's the flavour doing for you? Is it is it changing at all? Um, it's warming more. I'm getting some that dark caramel, f- roasty flavour is really coming through now. It's still smooth as anything, and the booziness is kind of lightening up a little bit, and the burning as well. I'm not getting the burning as much. So, you know, I'm kind of warming up a little bit. I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> it's good fun. Yeah. 10 or so percent, I, I, you know. I think hopefully we'll easy have a going few... We're... 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 For the end of the show. We'll have a few what, sorry? Woos. You know, we're... Woo! Where you're... Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and listen, my, my wife joined us very briefly on... The Queen Break Crawl on Saturday, and she regaled people with my woo story after the lock in last time. Yes, the, anyway. the, the last lock in was a good session, as, as, as will be the next one. So make sure you yeah. tune in Saturday, the 17th of January. That's the next time you'll see your wonderful host from the Beer O'Clock Show broadcasting live on the interwebs. And obviously, we are broadcasting live now, so Steve, we've been getting messages in through Twitter. Anything to we have. Um, yeah, um, Dave Martin again saying that the Italian beers are well worth investigating. Uh, even better still is to get to Italy. Um, Doody, I don't think he's joined us for the broadcast, but he's certainly joined us on Twitter um, <laughs> saying that he's happy to have lost his number one fan status as long as it went to Miles. I think there's some sort of northeast loving thing going on there. Um, and then uh, David Martin also self-promoting himself, saying he wrote a blog about Italian beers a while ago, um, and now his wife's come into the room and he feels a little bit guilty. don't think we want to read any more of Dave's tweets. don't know where they're going. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, if, if there is anybody watching that, that does want to um, converse with us, um, just, just give us a shout-out. Now's the time. Um, got about, I don't know, as long as it takes left on this broadcast. Um, Five minutes. Maybe we'll answer Miles' <laughs> question. Um, what, what are you hoping for for Christmas, mate? I don't know whether it was a... Is, is it a beer-related question? If you, if, if you could have one beer for Christmas, what would it be, Mark? It would be Tutti Frutti Saison, as brewed by Andy Parker. And coming <laughs> exclusively in Season 6 to the Beer O'Clock Show. <laughs> Fresh in a mini keg, delivered to my door. Um, did I tell you that I got a box of wildcard um, brewery beers from Secret Santa at my work due? No. Yeah. From my boss, that, who knows me a, far too well. That's a pretty decent Secret Santa. Yeah, so I got the Jack, King, Queen and Ace. I think the Ace is a stout. There's an IPA in there, and there's a pale, and there's a brown ale, I think. I can't quite remember. Oh, okay. I but more fucking beer I've for the beer shelf. Beers, mate. <laughs> I've yeah. had the Jack before, which I can't quite remember what. I th- no, the Jack is a red ale, I think. That was really nice. So they're based in East London, or thereabouts. Wild card, aren't they? Um, Why am I not surprised that they're they're based in London? Yeah, East London. Of all places, along with every other 
<laughs> bloody brewery. So yeah. I think they brew out of a pub because he's always talking about how he goes to the pub and they've got the brewery there as well. I don't know. But the nice beer that I had last time, you can get them at um, Source Market sometimes. Yes, yeah, Maybe they're it's... always at Source Market. They're always yeah. at Source Market at St Pancras. Yeah. Um, well, while you've been... Wait, we've been chatting there, mate. We've had a couple of other, uh, a couple of other tweets come in. I've got to mention them both, actually. Sean Smith is got his craft wanker on. Um, he's got the right glass for the right beer, so he's got his bald and barrel bearded lady in a magic rock branded glass. Well done, Sean. Nice picture as well, mate. Um, also said it's a great show. So glad you're enjoying it, and um, glad you're enjoying the live experience that is the beer o'clock show. And and then Doody, who not not wanting ever being one to keep quiet when he gets on one um, is most definitely watching live thank you very much <laughs> thank you it's nice <laughs> to know that you're with us this evening she'll, she'll wait yeah she'll, she'll wait for the appropriate <laughs> amount of time for him to r- write and send another tweet now <laughs> so we've been mate we've been chatting a little bit about um, season six um, should, should we give the should, should we give the listeners a little preview of what we've coming up next got coming up next season? Yeah, for the boys and girls who haven't been keeping, um, haven't been listening to the eleven pm somewhere podcast like we told you to, boys and girls. Yes. Um, yeah, let's give them a little rundown of what of what we have coming come February. Well, I'm I'm not. I'm not going to reveal all the all of the beers because um, we'll we'll put those up on the website in January. We're still finalising a few of them, um, but as as Mark said, um, back on episode one of 11 p.m. Somewhere podcast, which we have been signposting you to for about eight weeks now, um, we did reveal exclusive exclusively on Ian's podcast there that we're going to do uh, an Irish craft beer season. Um, so that will be season six. Uh, we're going to be featuring five of the best um, craft beers that are currently available in Ireland. Um, and on a number of those shows, we'll be joined by um, Ian from PM Somewhere and by Wayne and Janice from the Irish Beer Snob podcast. And they'll kind of be joint podcasts that we'll be doing with the guys from Ireland, talking to them about the brewing scene out there, about the beers that they've sent us. They've got some absolute crackers lined up for us. Um, the, 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 one that I, the one that I will mention is the one that we're going to open next season with, which is the much applauded Galway Bay of Foam and Fury. It's a double IPA, weighs in at about 8.5%. Mark absolutely loves that style of beer, so I thought it would be great to start the season off as, as we intend to carry on. Um, as I say, we'll be doing we'll be doing uh, around five or six shows featuring the Irish beers. Um, we we are currently trying to find a way to get those beers to our listeners. Um, we, we haven't finalised anything yet, but keep your eye on the website because as soon as we do finalise something, it'll be up on the website on on a little tab at the top that says season six beer list. In addition to that, mixed in with, with, with that, we will also have coming up, Mark mentioned, Tutti Fruity by Andy Parker. Two beers from the same base recipe. One of them is an APA, one of them is a Saison, so we'll be featuring those beers. Um, we have show number 100 coming up as, as well, which is a big show for us, big milestone. And again, based on the success of tonight, and, and the live broadcast. We're going to live broadcast our hundredth show as well. Um, another special beer for that show. We managed to get a hold of, of a couple of bottles of the Mikella Siren collab, the the Beer Geek um, Daydream, which is a white stout, eleven point eight percent or something like that. We'll be featuring that on show number one hundred. We've got loads of guests lined up next season. We've got a great range of beers um, lined up, and Everything will be revealed in its entirety in early January. So keep your eye on Twitter um, for the announcement that says Season 6 is here. And you'll be able to check out the beer list on the website. Indeedy. Doody's been on again while while we've been talking there, mate. Um, He hasn't got um, a bald and barrel bearded lady for this year. So he's off to get himself a bottle of Halcyon. Nice work, Michael. Nice work. 
Still number two fan. G'day, Miles. I, I, going, I'm mate? actually, I'm actually <laughs> contemplating chasing this this bottle of bourbon barrel bearded lady of the house you know, later. Oh, I thought you meant you, you, you're going to down it and one the rest of it. No, I've done this silly. <laughs> uh, this, this, this is a beer to be savoured. This, this is um, this is a real sipper. This one. I tell you what it is, but it's it's one that you just want to keep sipping as well. It's really nice, and the boys and girls know that I don't really go for the the higher ABV beers, but it's only ten percent. It's practically a baby. This is one funny thing from my Christmas do last week because we went to the Island Queen pub, which is in Islington, and they have a decent range of cans and bottles and stuff, but they have um, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale on tap. So um, if I ever see that on tap, I always go for it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so the girl behind the bar is pouring my beer out for me. My boss comes up to me. He goes, what are you having? I said, I'm, I'm, I've gone for the Sierra Nevada. And he looks at the label on it and turns around to someone and says, Mark's on the heavy stuff. That's 5%. I said, no, it's not. It's practically lemonade. 5% is nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> So they're, they're all thinking that I'm some heavy drinker because I'm drinking Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. And it's like, you know, two years ago, maybe <laughs> I would have balked at it. But 5% is nothing. It's nothing. Anyway, funny story there for you, Steve. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, mate. You should, take, you should take him in this bottle tomorrow and say, you know that heavy stuff you thought I was drinking last week? Check out this, what I drank last night. Yeah. On a school night. Good luck getting well, anything on reasonable on out of me today. <laughs> yeah. you, you know how my workflow is always really shit on a Tuesday, boss. This this kind of shit's why. <laughs> oh, and I just want to say uh, another standout beer from this season, which wasn't mentioned on our beer list, but it was Eddie Goodrich's homebrew from last week. Just the smell of it. I was saying this to Justin on Saturday. I think it was Justin. I can't quite remember who. But I was just recounting the aromas we got off that beer were just amazing. Were they? Yeah. The the, yeah. the aromas were amazing. It was all sweet and it was sherbet. Um, I mean, while why we're applauding the, the homebrews, let's not forget the uh, the Black Forest Gatto stout that as well because the... That the oh, yeah. flavours that we got out of that were, were just amazing. Um, and we, we will have, I, I didn't mention this in our rundown of season six, but there is going to be another homebrew special next season. Um, we've already managed to identify four willing participants who, who will come on to, to next season's homebrew show. So we'll keep you up to date with what we're going to be doing there as well. Yep, the homebrew season is going to be, it's, it's pretty much something we're going to be doing every season. It's, it's going to be a regular feature now. Yeah, absolutely. We, we might have to get to the point where we start bringing on people that have been, been on before. And uh, I mean, there are loads of homebrewers out there, but only a small number of them are willing to come on and, and, and share their beer live. But, um, you know, we'll Which find Which is a it. shame. If, if anyone's listening to this, because there's only five of you watching, but if anyone's listening to this, it's really easy. All you need is a microphone and a willingness to talk. If you're homebrewing and you're doing really good beers, then you have a modicum of intelligence already so just come on talk about your beers it's good fun we all get a little bit tipsy because we all drink four beers in about 40 minutes and sign up tweet beer o'clock show on twitter um or go onto the website beeroclockshow.co.uk and drop a comment somewhere and steve and i will pick it up and come on the show yeah i love the beer i, I love the homebrew specials I, I do. I, I always sleep well on on those nights. <laughs> Me too. Um, we've, we've had another tweet, mate, and, and I'm not sure if this is a, this is a tweet or whether it's a challenge. Um, Andrew drinks, who who a lot of people will remember, he was on our first homebrew special ever. Um, Andrew now resides in Luxembourg, and and I'm I'm guessing he's one of the five that are tuning in from from in Europe. Um, I'm not sure if this is a challenge, though, Andrew. So, uh, bald and barrel bearded lady, black and tan with halcyon, get blending. It's <laughs> Monday night. I'm, I'm not. I'm sorry. As much as I want to take that as a challenge, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm really not because that's that's just going to destroy me. 
for tomorrow, but I, I can anticipate how great it would change the taste. So um, th- thanks for the challenge there, mate, but I'm, I'm going to decline <laughs> on this, this occasion. <laughs> Oh, dear me. I've got a punk IPA in the fridge. Maybe I should blend after this. Nah. It's a, well, uh, maybe you should do it with punk and I should do it with house in. Nah. No, no, stop. Let's it. stop there. That's that's the sort <laughs> of talk that we need to reserve for the lock-in. <laughs> so if, if there are people that are watching that want to make those sorts of challenges, save it for the lock-in because it's the sort of stupid thing we can do on a Saturday night. But yeah. um, really, I'm not going to do it on a school night. And that's another thing that's going to be somewhat semi-regular is the lock-in we're going to be doing i think two a year three three a year is is three is the plan mate um yes uh there'll be there'll be the sort of january may and september will, will be the lock-ins um so we we already have um fantastically we already have a supporter lined up for the may lock-in as well so we know which beer we're going to be featuring in may uh, we've got half of the cast assembled for the May lock-in as well. So there are wankers assemble, up. wankers assemble, craft craft <laughs> Avengers. Um, if if you want to be on a lock-in uh, again, just just tweet us at Beer O'Clock Show and let us know, and um, we'll add to add you to the list of people that that want to feature on our live lock-ins. Yeah, and I tell you what, if you guys enjoy seeing these live episodes on a Monday night. I know it's a funny night to be watching things live on the internet. Let us know, and we could start doing the end of season beers a bit live. Maybe you never know. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not. This... We're, we're, we've really got faces for radio, but we're, we're happy to come on and broadcast every now and again. Speak for yourself, mate. Yeah, yeah, mate. Right. You're making some really <laughs> strange faces there. <laughs> As we're getting to yeah, the I... end of this, go on. I was just going to say, uh, did, did our did our view account just drop then when you started no. making strange faces? We're still on five. We're holding strong. Okay, excellent. Well, th- <laughs> thank you, you to girls. the five people that have been with us from beginning to end. Um, <laughs> we we really would just if if you're there, you're obviously watching. Please just get onto Twitter and and just tweet us that you're watching, um, so that we can actually give you a shout out as well. Because I'd like to say thank you to the to, to the five people. That, uh, is it four now? Is someone it's four just now. dropped out. Oh, back up to five. Okay. Back okay. up to five. If, right, if you're watching, tweet us now and let us know so we can give Down you a bit, bit, a bit of a roll of honour at the end of tonight's show. We'll, we'll give you all a shout out and, and, and thanks for staying with us because it must be strange just watching two blokes drinking an amazing beer on, on online on a Monday night. Yeah, and when there's other websites offering live video that, you know, a bit more entertaining than just two guys drinking beer. <laughs> You don't have to pay anything for this one, though. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Instagram. Moving Let's do an Instagram of the week, mate. Oh, I wasn't ready for that. Um, Go okay, on. I'm struggling this week because I've got... There are four that um, I really can't choose between. Um, so... Let's go for something as simple as I'm going to number them one to four. Mark, pick a number. Okay, this week's winner then is um, Annie's been a winner on a number of occasions this season. Um, fantastic film, E and G, for um, for this image. That's that's the Instagram oh. of the week for those of you that are watching. Very um, fancy. For those of you that are listening. It's up on the Instagram account <laughs> at Beer O'Clock Show. It's also in the show notes for tonight. Should I um? Should I just show you the other ones that were in contention for this evening as well? I, I'm going to show them. Obviously, this doesn't work in audio. Um, there's this one from Flynn Sean. Um, so Sean Smith, which I thought was quite nice. Came by. Yeah, all of these are going to be up on our Instagram feed this week, actually. Then this from Bottle and Bean who was with us on Saturday, and this was a picture of two glasses from Brewdog at the Crimbo Crawl, which I thought was quite a nice picture. Uh, I, it just, fond memories in my heart. Um, and then there was this one from, again, another long-term contributor, Sparky Wright. Um, cheers, Sparky, for this picture of a bottle of Yarl, which we'll be featuring next season as, as well, actually. So that's a, a very, very popular beer. 
a lot of people enjoy uh, the fine ales you are. Um, so uh, look forward to drinking that one next season. So that's the uh, that's the final Instagram of the week, mate. The final prize is prize for this year. Uh, apart from apart from the daily ones that I'm going to do over the 12, 12 beers of Christmas. So and anybody that wants to. When does the 12 beers of Christmas start? Starts on, uh, as you listen to this, if you're listening to this on Friday, it starts tomorrow. Um, if you're listening to this at any other point, it starts on Saturday the 20th of December, runs through until 31st December. One beer a day, different beers, put them on Instagram. Best picture will get daily Instagram, prize this prize. You can comment on the daily blog I'll be doing. You can put it on Twitter. Put it anywhere. Just use the hashtag 12 beers of Xmas and I'll be able to pick it up because I'll also be using Storyfy to put together um, a daily feed of those people that have got involved. Yes, indeedy. And tonight's beer on the final season of season five was a 10.5% ABV Imperial Brown Stout from... The beautiful people at Magic Rock Brewing. It was a bourbon barrel, bearded lady, Steve. We're both still going, but let's get our final thoughts on this, mate, as we wrap up this live broadcast. For, for me, this is a it's a long sipping beer. It's it's a beer that you could quite literally enjoy over the course of the evening. The, the 660 ml bottle that it comes in certainly gives you enough volume to be able to do that. Um, it gets better the warmer it gets in the glass. On the aroma, you're greeted with you're greeted with these sweet boozy flavours. There's, there's a hint of vanilla in there. There's a hint of hint of caramel. A little bit of pine in there as well. On the flavour, it's all dark. It's roasted. There's some really bittersweet chocolate in there. Um, there's maybe a little bit of coffee. There's a big, big boozy hit that comes through. Um, it's it's simply a stunning beer. Um, I just feel as though I'm missing a smoking jacket, slippers and a pipe because I think those three things would properly set me off with this beer. Yep, I, I, I will echo all of that. And I would say... And I think this is an experiment for anyone who has one left over and doesn't mind wasting it. Is start off the night with it chilled with some nice barbecued meat or a nice steak. Oh, yeah. Then as it warms, after the steak, have a variety of cheeses. Share the bottle with some friends and just sip the beer as you go along. Then as it continues to warm for pudding, have a fruit salad made of dark fruit berries um, with a little side of cream. And just that mix, as the as the beer warms, the flavours just transcend brown beers. It is such a lovely beer. Such a nice end to the season as well. It's just pure fucking class, this beer. Well, well is, is it fair to say you were happy with your surprise then, mate? I was very happy. I was a bit put off when it was Magic Rock because <laughs> they've tried to kill me many times in the past. You thought uh, it was going to be a hot bomb, didn't you? I so thought it was going to be a hot bomb. And when I saw the Imperial, I thought, okay, this is going to be a booze bomb, but it's not. They've just balanced this so well. So many of these types of beers just over the booze. You know, they think bourbon age means let's try and get all that booze in as much as possible. But it's nice and light in the booze, heavy on that dark, rich flavours. A smooth caramel, smooth coffee, and that nice burn at the beginning, which has now kind of eased off a bit, just to a gentle warmth. It is such a nice, smooth, treacly beer. It's gorgeous. Thank you, Steve. You're very you, welcome, buddy. mate. I love you too, and a very happy Christmas to you as as well. And I have to say that I always love your final beer description of the last show of every season <laughs> because it was almost the most it is always the most eloquent you get in terms of your beer descriptions um that, that, that was just that was a thing of beauty mate it almost made me weep oh i'm doing you proud that mate. The, that, that might be also that might also be the booze though but <laughs> more than likely mm. oh. Oh, I feel 
I feel like all, all warm and cuddly now. What a beer. So do I. I'm looking a bit flush on the camera as well. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm going to just burn up internally at any minute. <laughs> right, so shall we wrap this up, mate? Any final messages from Twitter that we should cover? Uh, let's let's just have a look. There's there's a couple. Um, so uh, Sean Smith is desperate for a bottle of nitro for the lock-in. Um, Sean, I I know that our supporters owls by mouth stock it when it's available in the UK, and I know that a a, a load of beer has just come into the UK because obviously we've just received our stocks for the lock-in. Um, just keep trying, mate. There's there's plenty around at the moment. Um, David Martin has said it's just like having to put up with us both on Saturday and three kisses. Make of that what you will, <laughs> buddy. We put up with you. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, oh, drunk maths at Gar Stang Grover. Um, he's a home brewer. He's a, he's a home brewer willing to get involved in the in in one of our homebrew specials next year. Uh, we'll be in touch at some point. Thanks for thanks for getting in touch with that. You're obviously one of the five. So I think we can probably work out that the five are Junk Maths, David Martin, Doody, Andrew Drinks, and Miles Lambert and Sean Smith. That's six. Um, somehow <laughs> six people are some watching. Some people are dropping scene, in and out. But only five are showing. Um, and then Sean Smith just uh, funking gorgeous. Um, I'm assuming <laughs> he's talking about me and not the beer uh, at this point. Um, oh, but yeah, I, I think you fucker. No, it's me, mate. It's, it's me since 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 I'm all smooth again. Yeah, people people go for the smooth. Um, but yeah, I, I think on that note, mate, that's probably a, a good place to um, end season five, don't you think? It is. So let's give a call out to our supporter for this season, Ales by Mail, who've been very supportive. They're your premier destination for bottled real ales delivered directly to your door. Visit alesbymail.co.uk and use the code BOCS10 for a 10% discount. Get those Christmas beers in. They've got a pretty decent range. You can get a shitload of beer, 10% off. What are you waiting for? You can find us online at beeroclockshow.co.uk, Twitter at beeroclockshow, Instagram at beeroclockshow, untapped at beeroclockshow. Steve, I'm on untapped at Roku. And I'm on Twitter at Roku Beer. That's the end of Season 5. Thanks so much, everyone, for your support. The show is going great. It's great to meet so many of you virtually and in person. And as always, Stephen, you're my reason for bearing. And I thank you. And mate, as always, as there's no one here to steal it this evening, it's been the <laughs> highlight of my week. Been the highlight it, of my year, really mate. And, and, and again, yeah, I, I just to echo what you've said, it's been an amazing year. Um, this 2014 has been the, the year where I think we've really gone to the next level with the Beer O'Clock Show. Um, we, we just hope that the that, that you people, the guys that listen to what we do, enjoy the, enjoy what we do. Um, we'll keep doing it for as long as you keep enjoying it and as long as we keep having fun. And, and if we do stuff that you don't like, tell us because all feedback is good for us so if if there's something if there's features that you don't like you, you know we'll, we'll we'll drop them and we'll we'll think of other things to do but we know you like the interviews with the brewers and the, the interviews with the breweries and we'll try and bring you more of those next season as well um so yeah we're just going to keep doing this for as long as you guys want to listen to us i think indeed and the craft beer scene has matured so much the community has matured so much over the last couple of years this year has been fantastic and again we thank all of you for your support all of those of you who get in touch with us by the website or via twitter or via instagram we thank you so much i hope you have a very merry christmas and a very safe new year we'll be back with the show in february and with the live lock-in in january check the website for details and check twitter for the 12 years of Christmas, as Steve does them. He will also be storifying things and putting those on the website. So get involved, get those beers, get drinking, and have a fucking fantastic Christmas. Until next time, thank you very much. Bye-bye.